Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Lamplight City. We are in the morgue in the police department, station, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it seems like we're going to use this workbench over here to try and figure out what's going on with the, the cloth that we found. Um, oh, it's been ages since we got to do any type of chemical analysis. This will be grand! Oh no. Dr. Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the Petri dish. Okay. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Okay. The red... Oh, God. Please tell me we're not going to have to, like, memorize this. Aha. The oil turned orange. Yes! The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? It is, actually, yes. Yeah. Wait. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Okay. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one, then I suggest going out looking for more oil samples. Ah. Okay. An empty petri dish isn't going to be of much use to our experiment. Best put something in it. Uh, can we Okay. So we've got whale oil. Oh, I see. Do we do do we do this? Put it into the dish? Yeah, we do. Right, I see. So what's the blue one? Well, oil be damned. Looks like there's not a match. No, okay. <sighs> so it's not oh, whale oil. I love it. <laughs> I see. Right, okay. This isn't too bad then, hopefully. Kerosene. Could be kerosene, right? Cuz that's that would burn. If I were to guess out of the three, I would say kerosene. I might be wrong. No. So much for kerosene being the culprit. Well, let's hope it's what what coal oil. Let's hope it's coal oil because if not, we're gonna have to go and find another sample. Too bad. No. I would on it being coal oil. Huh. Hang on. So we got. Blue and green and yellow. An empty petri dish isn't going to be of much use to our experiment. Best put something in it. Okay. So we're going to need to find something else then, I guess. What's Looks this? Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Hmm. Okay. Well. So none of. So we're going to need something in here, basically something we haven't got yet. So we're going to need to find another sample. All right. Well. For now, I guess we'll leave that. We can always come back here, I suppose. Let's hope Snelling isn't around. You're not going to snake on us, are you? Uh, right, what do we do next? We've got the burned cloth still, and we've got the testimony that it could have been that. We're not going to go for that, though. Not yet. Investigate the supper club. We went there and nothing really happened. Speak with attorney Jonas Usher. We need proof that she's dead which we don't have speak to peter andrews at the bank of the spoocher that looks like our next port of call then um because we have been pretty much everywhere we've been to the supper club there was nothing there let's go to the bank of the spoocher and see what we've got mr. here Fordham. who is this ah mr dupre oh see you again. him is there anything i can help you with yes i'm looking for peter andrews i was told he worked here that's right his desk is just over there. Thank you, Mr. Dupre. Lovely seeing you. Huh. Mr. Dupre. Jean Dupre. That's a bit of a turn up as well, isn't it? So a lot of these characters are coming back. Uh, should we speak to him? We haven't got anything else to ask him about. Oh. Right now. We've got nothing else to ask him about. There's a what clock an here. absurd contraption. Imagine needing all those extra bits and bobs just to tell the time. I, I kind of like the look of that clock, honestly. It's cool. I tried using one of these automatic money dispensers once. But I nearly got my arm stuck inside. <laughs> they still got a long way to go. <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, revolt. Yeah, impressive bit of hardware. It would take a criminal mastermind to rob this bank. Probably true, actually. Um, right, Peter Andrews. Let's speak. Mr. Andrews. Yes? Miles Fordham, private investigator. May I ask you a few questions? Might have to be delicate yes, I suppose here. that would be fine. Have a seat. I'd rather stand if it's all the same to you. Now then. We've got the high ground. <laughs> Okay, um, ask him about himself first. Exactly what is your role here at the bank? I'm the manager. Oh. I handle the new accounts, organize finance, that sort of thing. Have you been here long? Coming up on 17 years. 
Is this at all relevant to your investigation? Anything could be, Mr. Andrews. So, the lady, I've forgotten her name, was it Charlotte? Said that he was just some sort of clerk or something, but it turns out he's the manager of the bank? Okay, conflicting stories there. Do you know Desiree Lathan? Desiree Lathan? No, I can't say the name rings in. Lies! Found all your love letters. You say you don't know Miss Lathan. Would you care to explain these? Spilled beans. They crumpled up? Did she throw them out? And why do you have them? <laughs> I just love catching people like this. <laughs> you Relax, sick. Mr. Bill is sick. Let's take this slowly. Now, I can assume by your reaction that these are your letters? Yes, they are. So why did you lie about knowing Miss Lathan? I I promised my wife I would cut off Oh, he's contact, married as well. I didn't. The most recent letter is from two weeks ago. Did she hire you? Your wife? No, that's not why I'm here. Ah, well, that's somewhat of a relief then. Okay, let's ask about the wife. So your wife knows about your correspondence with Miss Lathan? Well, I don't know if you could really call it correspondence. Desiree never wrote back. I mean, it's, it's almost yes, stalking, I'll be end. honest. That is to say, Margaret found out shortly after we married. Exactly how many letters did this bounder send? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. At first, I tried to make it out that she was just a friend, but she found one of the more intimate ones while I was writing it. I see. And what was her reaction? What do you think? I still have the scar from the glass that she threw at me. You're still married? Oh, yes. Margaret comes from a very strict Catholic family. They would sooner she die than divorce. It hasn't been easy. She makes sure to take full advantage of the situation. Always buying herself the most expensive jewelry and spending a fortune on food for those wretched cats. <laughs> I swear, they're better fed than I am. Where might I find Mrs. Andrews? I'd like to speak to her. Our house is at 713 Longfellow Street, just at the edge of Gascombe. But I warn you, it's a goddamn menagerie she's got. <laughs> I'd stay away if you're averse to being covered in animal hair. I'll take my chances. He seems very angry about the fact that he got sent, got caught sending love letters to someone else while he was married. <laughs> I mean, it's entirely his fault. Also, if you're going to send letters like that and you get no response after like one or two letters, just stop sending them, dude. Seriously, come on. Uh, right, Desiree's death. Were you aware of Miss Lathan's death? What? Desiree is dead? No. She was found burned to death in her bed. You're lying. You have to be. I'm afraid I'm not, Mr. Andrews. He seems shocked. Oh, Desiree. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill her? Could be the wife. No, she was a marvelous woman. Well, I'm sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news, but at least you won't have to worry about writing any more letters. That isn't funny, Mr. Ford. <laughs> it yes, is a little bit. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. All right, Mr. Andrews. Well, that was uh, an interesting conversation. Um, speak with Margaret Andrews, really. We can't really do too much. This. I'm not going to do that one. That that doesn't, doesn't seem right. Dr. Edwards is already examining the ashes. We can't go there without evidence, and nothing happened at the Gascogne Supper Club. So, I guess it's off to his house, um, which is there. Yes. Ah, oh, it's a nice little squirrel there. Look at that. Nice house. It definitely screams eccentric person lives here. I don't know. Speaking of which, that must be Mrs. Andrews over there with those rodents. No, they're cute. Why are you being horrible, Bill? Come on. Um, can we examine anything here before we... Rats with fluffy tails. No, they're not. How anyone can find them endearing is beyond me. They're cute. Come on, Bill. Stop it. Uh, right, let's talk to her. Excuse me, Mrs. Andrews? Hello? May I help you? I'm Miles Fordham, private investigator. I was hoping you could answer a few questions. Hmm, all right then. Could it be her, maybe? Don't worry, my darlings, mommy only needs a moment to speak to the nice man, then I'll give you all the nuts you can eat. My little friend's just a door nuts, Mr. Fordham. Because that explains why squirrels are so attracted to you. <laughs> Bill! Ah, oh, right, let's start with herself. Do you have any hobbies or pastimes, Mrs. Andrews? Well, of course. I do a bit of knitting and I take care of my pets. I take it you're fond of animals? Oh, yes. I just love animals. Most prove to be better company than people. Is that right? Well, consider this, Mr. Fordham. Animals can't betray you or lie. I think it depends on the uh -oh, person, honestly. I don't like where this is going. 
My furry little companions would never hurt me. Unlike several humans I could name. I? Who are these companions, exactly? Why, my darling little kitties and squirrel friends, of course. Of course. Uh, let's ask about the cats. Tell me about your cats. They're the most wonderful little dears. Do you have any pets? Afraid not. My wife isn't too fond of cleaning up after animals. Pity. Cats make wonderful pets. They're good company and are independent, unlike dogs. Oh, well, she doesn't like Edgar dogs. Edgar and Hubert are my pride and joy. I give them only the best of everything, and they in turn give me their unconditional love. That's delightful. I used to have a wonderful cat named Tobias, but... Oh, he had an unfortunate accident. Huh. That's why I never let my two angels out of Poor the Poor Tobias. Uh, let's ask about Tobias. What happened to Tobias the cat? <clears throat> oh, um, I, I really rather not talk about that. It wasn't my finest hour. Uh-oh. Let's just say it was an honest misunderstanding which got blown way out of proportion. Well, now I just have to know. What yeah. Happened. I hate it when people tease gossip and don't deliver. Yeah, don't tease us with the with the the little the little bait on the fishing rod. Come on, we need to know. Right, squirrels. Your squirrel friends are quite tame. Oh, aren't they just the sweetest and so smart too? When I feed them, they come up and put their little paws on my hands as though they were giving me little squirrel hugs. Ah. And the way they look into my eyes, I can almost hear them saying, "Thank you for the nuts." Well, at least you can be grateful that it's only my voice you hear and not some rabbit squirrel. <laughs> Phil, come on, man. I mean, yeah, she, she's taking it a bit to the extreme, isn't she? Let's ask about Desiree Lathan. Did you know Desiree Lathan? Not personally. I never met her, but I knew exactly who she was. And who was that? A miserable drunk. Always ah. going out and getting liquored up at her so-called socialite balls. They try to make them seem so fancy and high class, but it's really just a bunch of bitter old hags getting together to gossip about each other. Really? That kind of lifestyle. It was only a matter of time before I caught up with her. Hmm. Let's ask about the death. Do you happen to know anything about the circumstances surrounding the death of Miss Lathan? I read in the paper that she was burned to death. In her bed, wasn't it? That's right. Do you have any idea how so that So she happened? knows, but her husband well, doesn't. I told you she was a drunk. Maybe she came home plastered and decided to smoke in bed. I'm rather surprised she was sleeping alone. That woman got around, if you know what I mean. Ooh, somebody doesn't like her. About Desiree for someone who claims to have never met her. True. Thank you for the chat. It was very enlightening. Oh, my pleasure, Mr. Fordham. Well, uh, now, yeah. If you'll excuse me, I need to get back to tending to my little darlings. You, you do that. She's she's not a fan of Desiree Lathan, so potential suspect right here. Uh, although we don't have any suspects in our list, which is weird. Oh, that's the that's oh that's the document we had for him, right? So we can go there, but we need the. We, I guess we need the. Um, I guess we need the evidence of death first, right? So again, find out what happened to Tobias the cat. Uh, okay, maybe the husband can tell us about that. He's the only one who would know, right? She's not going to tell us. Mr. Andrews. Yes. You got anything to say? Okay, yes, Tobias. Here we Is go. Is there anything you can tell me about your wife's old cat, Tobias? Oh, God. There's a name I was hoping never to hear again. <laughs> oh, no. She There's a story that. here. I'm sure she would have married it instead of me if she could. Mangy little bastard was always leaving a mess and knocking things over. All right. He was Peggy's little angel. Then one day I'd had enough, so I let him outside and... Yes? The stupid thing managed to get itself killed. Then things got ugly. How so? Peggy got a bit carried away and... Well, let's just say I never imagined a cat could earn someone a criminal record. The plot thickens. Or perhaps thickens. Yeah, so what actually happened? That Thanks sounds... for your time, Mr. Andrews. That sounds, um... Yeah, pretty bad. Nothing else to ask him about right now. Okay, well, uh, learn more about Margaret Andrews' criminal record. Where are we going to find out about that? Maybe the lady at the club can tell us something? Possibly. Let's see. 
Do you know anything about um, criminal I records? I have more questions for you later. I can scarcely contain my excitement. I bet. All right. Well, apparently not. This is not the place we need to go. Uh, where would we be able to find out the Brentwell guy? Maybe. Can you tell us anything about criminal records? I don't think there's really anything else worth asking him about right now. No. Or maybe actually the police station might be a good place. Yeah, maybe Upton. Maybe Upton can tell us something thinking about it. She's always a good wealth of knowledge, isn't she? She's probably the most useful other person in the moment, game. Upton. Yes, but let's make this quick. Let's see. If not, it'll just be wrap-up case. Yep, Margaret Andrews. Here we go. I need some information on one Margaret Andrews. Apparently, she has a criminal record. Margaret Andrews, eh? Give me a moment to look her up in the archives. Okay. Yes, here we are. Margaret Andrews was brought in for questioning five years ago in connection with a fire at a theater in Worcester. Ah. Yes. Nothing came of it, but she was briefly a suspect. A fire, There's eh? More. She also had a prior conviction for arson. Wow. And don't say. The file says she set fire to a cab after the driver ran over oh. her cat. She served six oh. months in prison for that. This was back in 1835. Fascinating. She's suspect number Thank one. Thank you for your help, Upton. This has been extremely valuable. So, Margaret Andrews has a jealous streak and a penchant for setting things on fire. Seems a likely culprit to me. Yep, seems more likely. Okay, we've got our first suspect. That's it for now. Better nice. Get back to it then. All right, that's what I'm talking about. So, um, return to Upton and accuse Margaret Andrews. We could do. Uh, we've got to investigate. That doesn't turn anything up. We still need proof of death. Maybe Edwards is done now with the thing. I don't know. Uh, but I tell you what, guys, we're actually out of time anyway. So we'll um, try to figure out what to do next in the next episode. It's all coming together nicely. So far, so good. Um, I don't know whether we will potentially go wrong again after what happened last time. Maybe something could throw us off track. But so far, it seems to be going quite smoothly. Touch wood. So as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle and Barry Aldridge for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next time.